Do not move to Charleston until you watch this video. If you're thinking of moving to the Charleston area, but you don't know which suburb you wanna live in, then this video is for you because we're gonna talk about the top five suburbs in the Charleston Tri-County area. So let's get into it right now. The Charleston Tri-County area is home to around 800,000 residents and over 12,000 new people are moving to Charleston every year. There are lots of places to live in so it can be a daunting decision when you're trying to figure out where you want to live. Which is why I thought it would be helpful to narrow it down to five areas. And on that note, if you're thinking about moving to Charleston in the next four weeks or four months, we would love to help you make a move. Contact info is in the box below, so reach out anytime. Shoot us a call, text, or email and we'll get right back to you. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the top five suburbs in the Charleston Tri-County area. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share some bonus suburbs with you, so make sure to stick around until the end. Now before we get into the list, we're going to look at some key factors of each suburb. And those are population, median home price, and average commute to downtown Charleston, as well as public school ranking and convenience. So number five on our list is West Ashley. West Ashley is technically in the city of Charleston, and it's located just a few miles west of downtown. The average commute to downtown Charleston is around 15 to 20 minutes, so it's actually one of the closest suburbs to downtown Charleston. The population of West Ashley is around 84,000 residents and the median home price is around 400,000 at the time of this recording. It has a mix of older neighborhoods as well as new construction communities. Those include the settlement at Ashley Hall and the point at Rhodes Crossing. West Ashley also has many events and festivals throughout the year such as the Low Country Cajun Festival and the West Ashley Farmers Market. West Ashley is home to several shopping centers, including the West Ashley Town Center and the Citadel Mall. And if beach access is important to you, you'll be glad to know this next part. And that is that West Ashley is only a 30 minute drive to Folly Beach. And it's also a 30 to 35 minute drive to Isle of Palms and Sullivan's Island. There are also several parks in West Ashley, such as the West Ashley Park and the St. Andrews Parks and Playground. Fun fact, St. Andrews is where I learned to play tennis as a five year old kid. Speaking of kids, if you're looking for schools, West Ashley has a few A and B rated schools, according to Niche.com. I personally went to Springfield Elementary and C.E. Williams Middle. So if you want to learn more about those schools, check out Niche.com for more detailed information. Now, the next suburb we're going to get into is Johns Island, South Carolina. Johns Island is about 12 miles southwest of downtown Charleston. The average drive time to downtown Charleston is around 25 to 30 minutes. And Johns Island has a smaller population of about 23,000 people. So if you're looking for a more rural area, then this might be the place for you. Because it's more rural, you're going to find more nature, more scenic views, and more wildlife. And just driving there, you'll notice a bunch of beautiful oak trees with Spanish moss hanging down. The median home price is relatively higher at $650,000. That's more than other areas in Charleston, but the trade-off might be worth it for you. You get more nature and potentially more land. And they have new construction communities like Twin Lakes, Kiowa River, and the preserve at Fenwick Plantation. And depending on the neighborhood, you're gonna find a few amenities like pools, trails, and even boat docks. So what else does Johns Island have to offer? Well, Johns Island has farms and markets open throughout the year. You can go strawberry picking at places like Bugby Plantation, for example. And if you need to go shopping, you can go to Johns Island Shopping Center or Freshfields Village. Oh, and if you're looking for other parks, you've got to go see the famous Angel Oak Park and also Johns Island County Park. If you're looking for kayaking, check out St. John's Kayaks. And if you want to know what farm life is like, check out Eden Wind Farm. And lastly, if you're thinking about schools, you might find less options on Johns Island. And again, that's because of the low population density. So if schools are important to you, make sure to do your own research. And after Johns Island, our next stop on the list is number three, and that is Goose Creek, South Carolina. Goose Creek is named after the creek that flows through the town where geese like to congregate. Goose Creek, South Carolina is the 30 minute drive to downtown Charleston, and it has a population of nearly 50,000 people. And the median price is quite affordable at 300,000 at the time of this recording. Goose Creek also has great communities like Liberty Hall Plantation and Crowfield Plantation. You'll find community pools, playgrounds, and other amenities too. And in terms of schools, you'll find A and B rated schools throughout Goose Creek, according to Niche.com. And now that we're more than halfway through the list, if you want to know more about the climate, the culture, and things to do in Charleston in general, then check out the video here. This is my video on the pros and cons of living in Charleston, South Carolina. And with that said, let's get into the next suburb, which is personally where I live. And that is the charming Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant is nine miles to the northeast of Charleston, South Carolina. And it's about a 15 to 20 minute commute to downtown Charleston. So it's one of the closest suburbs to downtown Charleston, and it's home to over 9,000 residents. 
students. You'll find though that the median home price in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina is a little bit higher. It's at $750,000. But with that, you'll find a mix of older neighborhoods and newer construction communities, as well as waterfront properties. Popular neighborhoods include Park West, Bell Hall, and Hamlin Plantation. With that said, what else does Mount Pleasant have to offer? Well, Mount Pleasant also hosts the annual Food and Wine Festival. It's definitely a must attend event for foodies and wine enthusiasts. It features some of the best chefs, wineries, and breweries nationwide. There's also the Scottish Games, which celebrates the culture and heritage of Scotland. They've even got classic bagpipes and drum bands. And as mentioned in a previous video, there are plenty of shopping centers and grocery stores in Mount Pleasant. Not to mention you can be as little as 10 minutes from the beach. And if you're thinking about schools, you'll be glad to know there are A-rated schools like Bell Hall Elementary, Lang Middle, and Wando High School. If you want to know more about schools, check out niche.com of course. And if you want to know more about what it's like to live in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, check out my video up here. And with that out of the way, we're finally at number one on our list, and that is the popular Somerville, South Carolina. Somerville has a population of over 53,000 residents. It's about 26 miles northwest of downtown Charleston, and it'll take you about 35 minutes to get to downtown. And something a lot of people don't know is that Somerville is the birthplace of sweet tea. And it's also nicknamed the flower town in the pines. Why? Well, take a drive through Somerville and you'll see plenty of pine trees lining the streets. Now enough about trees, let's talk a little bit about the homes in Somerville. Somerville is still affordable at the median home price of $350,000. Combine that with new construction communities in Exton and Cane Bay Plantation, and you'll see why people are flocking to Somerville. You'll also find special events like the Sweet Tea Festival, Somerville Farmer's Market, and their own Oktoberfest. And in terms of shopping centers, you'll find Azalea Square and Oak Brook Station. So you can buy what you need and when you're tuckered out from shopping you can take a break and grab a bite to eat. And if you're looking for more things to do there are plenty of parks and playgrounds in Somerville. And if you're interested in schools, Somerville has schools that offer IB programs like Ashley Ridge High School and Cane Bay High School. And other schools offer STEM and arts programs as well. And with that, that finishes up our list of the top five suburbs of the Charleston Tri-County area. If Somerville or any of these other towns don't seem like a fit for you, then you might enjoy these honorable mentions. And those are James Island, Daniel Island, North Charleston, Ladson, and Monk's Corner. We'll talk more about those suburbs in future videos. And as always, if you're thinking about moving to Charleston, don't hesitate to reach out, give us a call, text, or email, and we'll get back to you to help you make a smooth move to Charleston. My name's Kristen, and I'll see you soon in the next video.